All righty. Well, good afternoon. Good evening, everybody. We are so excited to have you all here tonight uh, to join us, talk a little bit more about understanding your financial aid offer sheet, a little bit more on that in a moment. But let's go ahead and get started by saying welcome from everywhere across the country, across the globe as well. We're so excited to have you. My name is Kevin Buckley. I am an admissions counselor at the University of Louisville Office of Admissions. You might have seen me before on a few past Facebook Lives or Maybe I've, uh, you know, your counselor, I've interacted with you in person, in which case, hello again. Tonight, we're going to be joined by the Office of Financial Aid here at the University of Louisville to go over what we call understanding your financial aid offer sheet. And I'll explain what that is in a little bit, kind of briefly, and then Mike will go into it a lot more in just a second. Um, but now is a good time if you have that handy, if you submitted a FAFSA to us, maybe a, you know, a little bit longer than a month ago because it takes some time to get to us and process and stuff like that. We would have gotten something in the mail. It would have been a big old like colorful sheet, lots of numbers and information. We'll show some examples in a little bit. Now's a good time to take that out so you can follow along um, as we're going through. And the way this is gonna work, um, kind of laying the ground rules out for you here tonight. First and foremost, we're keeping this all related to the financial aid offer sheet. So if you have questions about general admission processes, your next steps, what's orientation going to look like, all that good stuff that we know you might be wondering about. We're going to ask you to go ahead and email your admissions counselor. Just go to louisville.edu backslash admissions. Um, find your admissions counselor on there. Ask them all those good questions that you have, but we're going to keep it tonight just related to financial aid to so really focus in on all those questions that you all might have. Um, the second part of that is really important. So let us know what questions you do have. If you want to know more about something Mike's talking about, if you're confused about something on that offer sheet or you know general financial aid things, we're happy to help answer those. Um, some of them we'll ask here live. Um, we'll kind of have Mike answer those and explain them so everyone can get that answer. Other ones we might um, type in questions or comments to your questions on the Facebook page. You see the event that you're seeing. But any questions that you have, type them down below, let us know. We're going to try to answer as many as we can tonight. And if we don't get to your specific question or you want to go back to find a question that was asked, um, you can always come back to us later or email financialaid, um, finaid at louisville.edu. Um, and we'll give some more contact info towards the end of this presentation, towards the end of the evening. The last big thing, probably the most important thing for you all to know, this Facebook is public. So as we're going on this event, Anything that you type in these comments will be made available for everyone to see, right? And financial aid is one of those tricky things where it's a lot of personal information. We know that every single financial aid offer sheet is different. Very rarely do two people have the same financial aid offer sheet, right? Because everything's different. So you might have a lot of questions that kind of depend on your income or your social security number, a specific case that you have. We love those questions. Let's keep those for one-on-one -on -one conversations with the Office of Financial Aid. So if you have those questions, please make sure not to put your income status or private information, we'll call it, in those comments because everyone can see that. We'll keep tonight more general, more basic. And if you have those more private questions, more specific questions, let us know after by emailing us, calling us, coming in person to visit us, all that good stuff, so that we make sure everyone's security is respected tonight and we're good to go. All right. With all that being said, I am going to turn over to Michael Bood. He is one of our uh, Office of Financial Aid staff. Now, um, you might have seen him a lot. If you're coming to UofL this fall, you're going to see him a lot as well. I'm giving you some more info. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. You can start asking those questions as we're going through the presentation in the chat. So, Mike, go ahead and take it away. Thank you so much. So, yes, my name is Mike Bood. I'm the guy in the green shirt that you see around orientation and various other uh, visiting opportunity. So I'm just going to go ahead and dive right on into the presentation because I want to fly through it and give plenty of time for those questions. And again, we will take questions. We just want to make sure that when you type those questions in the chat that you're not saying your name or your ID. By all means, ask your general questions, but keep it general. So I'm going to take just one second and share my screen. And 
All right, so I've got a thumbs up already. So the offer sheet. So if you don't have an offer sheet yet and you're joining us early, which I know that some people actually called us this week and said, I really wanna join, but what's, when's my offer sheet gonna get there? We're actually mailing out 600 offer sheets early next week. So more are on the way. Now, close to 6,000 have already hit the streets since, uh, since December. But theoretically, hopefully you've got the one that we mailed to your home address. Worst case scenario, you should be able to log into your UofL email account and type in the word offer. And most people have at least one offer sheet. If we've changed some of your answers or changed some of your awards, you might have a second one. But most importantly, at this point in time, in order to qualify to receive an offer sheet, you should have filed a 22-23 FAFSA at this point. Now, if you haven't and you've only gotten a communication from the admissions office about you know, your scholarship or you're aware of what your keys award are, that's fine. You can still follow along and understand some of the mathematics that we're gonna talk about tonight. We will eventually send you an offer sheet because we want you to understand the mathematics, but tonight's, for, the, for tonight's purposes, if you've got an offer sheet, it's because you filed the FAFSA and we've already sent you something in the mail. Um, so a couple of housekeeping things before we dive too far into the presentation. So our office, Kevin mentioned it. Yes, we want you to call. We want you to come by. Um, we want you to be masked and be safe, but, and not, not on Thursday and Friday with this ice storm moving in, okay? Um, but we're located in Houchins room 110. For the most part, most of our office uh, were open from nine to five. On Thursdays, we've got some special hours at 1030 because we're taking care of some in-house staff meetings and stuff like that. But you can walk in, you can come in by appointment. Now, we do ask that you do try to arrive by 430 because most of the time our conversations are gonna last about 30 minutes. So we don't want you walking in at 501 going, can I meet with somebody? Um, but you can always call in. Um, you know, if you're from out of state, if, you know, that's fine. We want, we want you to call in. We understand that, you know, there might be time changes and we'll be respectful of your or your parents' work schedule as well. So by all means, um, and by the way, yes, this is recorded, but I have no fear to take your iPhone, take pictures of every screenshot that I have so that you don't have to like write down a phone number real fast. So one of your best tools, honestly, is our website, louisville.edu backslash financial aid. Um, a lot of times, some people will come back to us and say, your website's too big, and that's a good thing. Um, the reason being is we want to be very transparent with our information. We want to make sure that if you have a question about loans, there's a paragraph about a loan, and then it's going to tell you step one, step two, step three, step four, exactly how to process the loan. Um, so we want to make sure that we work nine to five. Yes, it's after five and we're still working, but we want to be respectful that you may not have time while you're at school or while mom and dad are at work to go visit a website so or, or give us a call. So go visit our website and ask those questions um, based on some of the things that you see, okay? Um, now, the FAFSA, the studentaid.gov. Um, I do want to point out that, again, yes, tonight, the majority of our, our viewers are going to already have this on file. But for those that, that, that don't, it's not too late. The FAFSA for the 22-23 um, academic cycle came out October 1, 2021. Um, you can file it whenever. I do encourage you to make sure that regardless if it's U of L or another school, really consider filing it before May, okay? Try to make sure that you have a complete financial picture, even if it is just loans on your account, of what it's going to look like in terms of your costs versus what financial aid is going to be offered to you. Um, please note that when you go to the studentaid.gov website, you will see two FAFSA applications right now, one for 21-22 and one for 22-23, okay? A lot of times students will call me like, I haven't gotten my offer sheet yet. We're like, we don't have your FAFSA. I know I filed the FAFSA. We'll go into the database. You filed 21-22, we need 22-23. Now, if you are thinking of starting school early, like you're thinking of starting in summer, summer of 22, yeah, go ahead and file at 21-22, but for the purposes of most freshmen, um, when you start in fall of 22, we want to make sure you've got that 22-23 FAFSA on file. Um, I can't remember when, uh, we did it in October, uh, Kevin, I, Morgan, James, we all did a FAFSA night. Um, so if you need some help filing a FAFSA, go watch that recording as well. So 
Um, so request for additional information. We don't have too much of this going on right now. More of it's going to start to evolve in the coming weeks. But in some cases, when you log into Ulink, we'll get to what Ulink is in just a second. I got out of order here. But um, so Ulink is our portal where we can basically interact with you virtually. We had this well before COVID. But in some cases, maybe you haven't gotten an award letter yet because you've got a to-do list. You've got a task that you've got to complete, okay? So we're gonna be sending you emails of, we need citizenship documentation. We need legal relationship information from you in order to move forward. And the way that we're doing that is through your Ulink account. So the first time you log into Ulink, ulink.louisville.edu, there's a couple of great sites that you can go to. Um, my personal favorite, and the blue circles are not on the website, but when you go there, I prefer going to that bottom one where it says information for first time users. It's kind of a paragraph and a step-by-step -step of exactly what goes on. You can also go to the information and the video tab up at the top. The thing to understand about the video tabs is that they're really quick. They're like 30 second videos and they go, you can pause them and you can replay them as many times as you want, but they go pretty quickly. So if you haven't logged into Ulink yet, um, then definitely I would log in. There's all, there's all sorts of information about what your user ID is, what your first time password is, how to change it. And this really is how you're going to interact with the university for the next four or five years. That's how we, that's how you're going to register for your classes. That's how your billing process is going to occur. So it's a good idea to go ahead and start to be familiar with it. Okay. Now, um, in terms of if you have a to-do list, when you click on the task, uh, uh, the task tile, um, it's going to look like a little uh, clipboard with a checkbox on it. And within there, it's going to tell you, you've got a verification form, or you've got a citizenship form, or you've got something to do. And then once you click on it, then it'll provide you either with the opportunity to print the form or to kind of be aware of what you have to do about that form. Now, please be aware, don't log in there and assume that, okay, I'm good for until fall. You probably need to log in every two weeks just to kind of keep up to date. The other thing to be aware of is, we'll actually send you an email the week that something gets posted. And then if you don't take care of it, 30 days later, 45 days later, but after that, it's kind of on your responsibility to make sure it gets taken care of, okay? Now, um, some other examples of why are we asking for this information? Verification, we will have a whole nother Facebook Live session about that in about eight weeks. Basically, in some cases, the government requires us to confirm some income information in order to make sure that your awards are correct. In other cases, we may not have sent you an offer sheet because we need citizenship or legal relationship information from you. But as soon as you get that to James, Morgan, myself, our office, about two weeks later, we'll have an offer sheet ready for you, okay? Now, um, another quick thing about verification, and I, I mentioned this word verification three or four times because it is the largest checklist item out there. It, it impacts about 20, to 20 plus percent of our student population. Um, what's important about that is that you may be hearing verification from other schools. Each school has to complete verification separately. So just because you've sent off tax paperwork to Kia Verify or another school, doesn't mean you've completed it with us yet, okay? So just be aware that you might have to complete these steps with multiple schools as you're kind of finalizing your choices, okay? Now, the other thing that I wanna do, and this is the one where the parents, all, all the parent ears should kind of perk up all of a sudden, is what's called delegated access, okay? So parents, guess what? Johnny, Susie, the student, they're the adult right now, okay? They're the ones that, when we send an email, when we send a bill, when we send anything, it's to your student. We're not sending it to you as the parent, even though we all know that you're the one writing the big check, okay? Um, but the good news is, is that students, you can actually log into your profile, your Ulink account, and the one that looks like a little name tag, a badge, you can actually click on your profile. And then from there, you can access the option to, to tab on to delegated access and you can type in the name and the email of the individual. So you can type in mom, dad, if your parents are divorced, fine. Everybody can still say, stay on the same page. Grandma, add grandma, grandma always pays the bill. So the other nice thing is, is that students, this does not give access to 
your grades. Mom and dad can't look up grades. It, you cannot change your coursework. I know that there's some, you know, some students have like, mom, dad wants me to be an engineer. I don't want to be an engineer. Dad can't change your classes. Okay. All this gives permission to is to review the bill, to make a payment online, to gain access to understanding what charges are due, as well as the tax form, the 1098T. That's the only thing that you're doing for your parent at this point in time. And the great thing is, is that the bursar's office, the billing office receives this information so that every time you as the student receives a bill, guess what? Everybody that you've designated as a de delegated access person, they get a bill too. That way, mom, dad, grandma, student, everybody's on the same page at all times about what financial aid is getting posted and what the bill is, okay? Now, let's start talking about the actual reasons why we're here is the money, okay? So tonight I'm gonna to use some different terms and I just wanna define some of them very briefly. So we're gonna be talking about scholarships, which are the free money in terms of merit-based award or different things that the university or an outside, in, outside entity may be offering to say, we wanna promote your opportunity to attend a higher education institution. This may be based on your GPA, your ACT scores, community college or community um, uh, services that you've completed. So free money for the opportunity to go to school. Grants, grants are also free money, but grants are defined by typically the FAFSA being on file. The FAFSA determines your strength or your ability, your, your ability to pay for school. It takes into account your income, your parents' income, various different mathematical calculations to figure out your strength and ability to pay for that. And from there, that generates the federal grant, the state grant, and in some cases, institutional grants, okay? Again, grants are things that don't have to be paid back. Loans, we're gonna talk a little bit more about loans. I know it's a four letter word, but loans are a fact of life. Approximately two thirds of the student population takes out loans. It's not a bad thing. And we're gonna help you understand why in some cases, it's okay to take out a portion of loans, okay? Work study. We'll get into work study as well. Work study is my favorite program that the, uh, that the Fed's ever created, James as well. Um, and that's because that gives you an opportunity to work on campus. The money doesn't get applied to your bill, but it gives you a great opportunity to network uh, and, and be a part of the employment opportunities on campus. So diving into each of those a little more, a little deeper. So as far as university scholarships go, we have to be very honest that upfront, the admissions-based scholarship deadline was December 15th. But Mike, it's February 1st, that deadline has passed. Yes, it has, okay? Um, Kevin's laughing because Kevin read a whole stack of scholarships. I mean, like way taller than that. Um, yes, that deadline has passed. Um, you have to understand that we do have to manage that budget appropriately and we have to kind of make sure that uh, we're looking at profiles and various different, uh, you know, uh, factors to make sure those awards are going out uh, in a timely fashion. Um, the other thing that you still have the opportunity to do is you can actually still come on to the financial aid homepage. Um, Morgan or James will drop that in the chat here momentarily. That deadline doesn't close until March 1st, okay? So there are still opportunities to qualify for some scholarships, okay? Um, there are other scholarship opportunities, primarily through departments. So if you're going to be an engineering student, if you're going to be um, part of the ROTC group, if you're going to be a music school student, there may be opportunities now as well in future semesters um, to potentially qualify for scholarship funds from the institution, okay? Now, you do also have to realize that if you're receiving an outside scholarship, whether that is from a high school, a church, a community organization, your parents' employers, um, by federal law, 90% of those are going to have your name on it, but the check is going to be made out to us, okay? Um, there's a lot of federal laws that are tied to that. I'm not gonna go into all that, but at some point in time, we want you to report that to us. And the advantage of doing that is those checks probably are not gonna be cut until June or July uh, of this year. But the advantage is, is you can actually log into our, our system now and tell us, I'm getting $1,000 from my church. And we'll actually send you a new offer sheet with your grants, your, your, your keys money, your loans, and it'll say potential outside scholarship so that we and the billing office knows that don't charge the student an extra thousand, 
the thousand dollars is coming from some other place. Okay. There are other federal impacts uh, to that that I'm not going to go too deep into, but please understand you do have a responsibility to let us know about those scholarships. And I know that a lot of times it's typically around April or May when a lot of these organizations celebrate you're graduating. Congratulations. Here's that scholarship. So just kind of put that in the back of your mind that you do have to eventually report those back to us. Okay. Now your keys money. Now, I know we have a lot of non-residents with us uh, tonight. Just ignore me for about 30 seconds. So keys money is the, if you're a Kentucky resident graduating from a Kentucky accredited high school, guess what? You've already earned money to come to school um, for your good grades, for your positive AT, ACT score. The average keys award is about $1,600, but you may actually have more than, you know, up to $2,500 or more. Um, you, don't, you don't have to accept the award if you're logging into Ulink. A lot of times freshmen will say, I'm trying to click on, on the accept button, but nothing's working. The only time you have to accept anything in Ulink is when it's a loan. If it's a grant, especially if it's your keys award, you don't actually have to accept it. Um, now, there is a small percentage of students that you don't see a keys award on your account. And that is most likely because your name, social, or date of birth is being misreported by your high school to the state. It's a very easy fix. The state and the universities fix hundreds of these every year, but it's important to go ahead and get it fixed now and not in August before school starts, okay? So if you're looking at your Ulink account and you don't see a keys award, then it may be an opportunity to have a quick conversation to make sure that your high school has those three proper identifiers or give us a call and maybe we'll figure out what the, what the wrong identifier is. Um, we actually have a very good colleague that works at the state uh, that used to work for, you know, at U of L. So we have a great colleague that we can just call and be like, hey, what's wrong with this account? It's the social, great. And then we can tell you, hey, you need to tell your high school counselor to fix your social, okay? Now, the Pell Grant. So if you're looking at your offer sheet and you're seeing a Pell Award on there, please know, and this is not just for the Pell Grant, it's actually for a lot of the numbers, and we'll go over this a couple times. It's reflective of the 21-22 um, uh, academic year. The government has not actually released the 22-23 Pell Awards. Um, it's not going to be a game changer in some cases. Some years it stays the same. Some years it's $100, maybe $200 different. So it's not like you should be expecting a big game changer of, hey, a thousand extra dollars is going to come into play. But just realize that probably in the next 30 days, we're going to send you an updated offer sheet via email to say, hey, you've got a new offer sheet because the Pell Grant Award changed. Again, so just realize that you may see a few dollars difference. Now, so work study. So if you don't see a work study offer on your account, please understand that work study is generated by when you marked on your FAFSA that you were interested in, being, in, in wanting to qualify for work study. Um, and so there's going to be a whole nother set of emails that is sent to work study students, okay? Primarily work studies given to low income Pell eligible students, okay? That's not to say that we don't offer the additional work study funds. Later down the line, we actually have a process later in May that we start to open up the, award, the awarding opportunity to other students who are interested in work study. But here's the one thing to note. Maybe your parents have a higher income and you don't qualify for work study at all. Guess what? There's only about 500 plus jobs, 500, 550 jobs on campus that are designated for work study. The reality is, is that there's over 1,500 jobs on campus for students, okay? So the reality is the majority of students actually don't have work study, okay? Um, so work study is great because students that work on campus, whether it's work study or just, ha just having a regular job on campus, working on campus is fantastic because you have a higher GPA, you have a higher retention rate, meaning that you come back semester after semester and you have a higher graduation rate. And the simple reason is, is that James, you know, that, that Kevin's your supervisor and you tell Kevin, Kevin, I'm stressed out. I've got this test on, on, on Friday. What we're doing in the office is not rocket science. Take three or four days off, go to the library and make up your hours the following week. You work for me and you say, Mike, I'm stressed out. I think I'm gonna drop this class. Wait, before you drop, let me call my buddy, Jeff over in the reach center. Jeff, I need a tutor today, not two weeks from now, today for my student because I'm going to take care of my student, okay? So that's why it's a great, a, a great thing to think about working on campus, all right? We just covered uh, a lot of this. I'm gonna, I, I kind of jumped ahead. 
when you uh, uh, receive work study funds, the funds are not applied to your bill. You're basically paid, it's almost like a debit card. You're paid every two weeks direct deposit into your, uh, uh, into your checking account, okay? Now, here we're gonna talk about loans. There's a couple, about three or four slides we're gonna talk about loans. I promise I'm not gonna be too preachy about this. I wait to be preachy in, in, in the summer, but just realize that in terms of loans, there's a couple of different options. There's the student loans that you see on your offer sheet. In some cases, you see a subsidized loan, which is an interest-free loan. You also see an unsubsidized loan, which is the kind that accrues interest while you're in school. The important thing to note about student loans, and this is why it's important to consider a federal loan versus a private loan at this point, is that in many, in, in the federal, for the purposes of the federal loans, repayment doesn't begin until six months after graduation or six months after you stop taking classes, okay? So you get to essentially kick the can down the road for about four years, okay? Now, parents, when you're looking at your offer sheet, we acknowledge that you are probably putting U of L's offer sheet next to other schools' offer sheet. And one of the things that you're going to notice is, is that you might see a plus loan on those other offer sheets. We intentionally do not put the parent plus loan on your offer sheet. 100, 1,000%, 1, you, can, you can receive a plus loan through the University of Louisville. Our website will walk you through that process. However, we intentionally don't put it on there because we don't want you to feel like we're pushing a plus loan onto you. We don't want you to feel like that is your only option to pay the remaining bill. We want you to know that if that's the road you want to go down, great, here's what to do. Um, but there's options of a payment plan. There may be other, you know, other work-related options to pay for the bill, but that's why you will not see the Parent PLUS loan on our offer sheets at UofL. Um, now, if you apply for one, which we don't want you to do that until June or July when the bill is actually generated because the credit check is only good for 120 days, okay, through the federal government. So you don't want to apply now and then wait until August and then it, it becomes a problem. Um, alternative loans. Not all of these are bad, but not all of them are good, okay? And what I mean by that is that we actually just had a student email us recently. Whether it's you're signing up for your class ring or your cap or gown or some other indication that you're about to graduate, unfortunately, some of these companies are selling your information to third-party vendors. And these third-party vendors are lenders, are, 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 are predatory loans. And so you might be receiving postcards or emails saying, hey, congratulations on graduating soon, take out a loan through us. Before you go down that road, make sure that you're, you're filing the FAFSA and you're maximizing your federal loans first, and then you're researching the options of the Parent PLUS loan or the alternative loan before you go down that road, okay? Now, um, in terms of thinking about loan options, be smart, okay? Make sure that every three to six months that you're looking at your overall loan balance online and realizing that in four years, in three years, in two years, when I graduate, I'm going to have to pay back this amount of money, okay? Now, remember that whole idea of working while you're at college? Well, yes, the repayment doesn't start until you graduate, but you can pay the interest while you're in school. And the other great thing is, is pay $50 while you're in school, pay on the principal balance while you're in school. If you simply paid $50 through over the four years, you're gonna pay off over 20, I think it's $2,800 on the principal balance, okay? Um, make a deal with mom and dad. Mom, dad, for every semester I have a 3.0, a 3.5, will you pay $500 toward the principal balance? Now, the reality is, is there may be a few mom and dads out there leaning over going, I can't do that. And that's fine, okay? But have the conversation. You know, you know uh, what, what's that show, Let's Make a Deal? You know, let's make a deal, you know, grandma, if I graduate, will you pay off a thousand dollars of my loan? You know, so there's, you know, just because it's a loan, it's not a bad thing. Okay. Now, one last uh, slide about loans, just because I want, I don't want you to be scared about loans. I know that there's a lot of bad information on Yahoo and MS, MSN right now about, I borrowed 150,000 in loans. I'm never going to be out of debt. Here's the reality about loans. If you attend a four-year public institution, and I have to stress that, four-year private is a completely different ballgame, but if you attend a four-year public institution, the ballpark of what you're going to borrow is about 27,000, okay? That's according to the government's website, okay? At L, it's actually closer to about 25,000, okay? 
Um, and so your potential payment is going to be a ballpark figure of about $270 a month. In total interest over a 10 year period, you're gonna pay back about $5,000. So your overall degree is gonna ballpark about 32,000, okay? But if you do those couple of tricks where you're paying $50 a month, where you know mom and dad are gonna pay a portion of it for you, then that, that's a game changer. Maybe you only end up borrowing 15,000 or 17,000 or some other different amount. But I just don't want you to be scared about all the you know, hype media that's out there. I also want you to be very careful of not borrowing because you think that the government is going to forgive a percentage of loans. That is all just conversation, conversational right now. It is not fact, it is not law, okay? We have a lot of people calling the office saying, I heard that the government's going to forgive $10,000, $50,000 worth of loans. How do I get into that deal? It's all hearsay right now, okay? Um, so here's the real thing. Thanks for all that other information. Let's talk about the offer sheet. That's why we're all here. So real quick, in terms of ballpark figures, here's a quick chart, take a picture of it, but also understand these are also estimated numbers. What we're trying to give you right now is just a ballpark figure of if you're going to be a commuter student, in other words, a local student living at home with mom and dad, what your tuition, your books and supplies are going to be, your ballpark figure about 14000 If you're a Kentucky resident living on campus, um, yes, the number goes up a little bit. It goes up to about twenty three k. If you're a non-resident, now you're looking at about 39000 I know these are big numbers, but we want to get this first bit of information out there before we dive into how does the financial aid deduct this information. The other thing that I have to make, make you aware of is yes, take a picture of this, think about these numbers, but the board of trustees will not meet until about April of this, uh, of this year. So these numbers are based on 21-22. We will not know the official numbers for 22-23 until about April. And at that point in time, admissions, our office, the Courier Journal, every major news outlet in the state of Kentucky, because other schools, we won't mention those names, will release their information right all about within five to seven days of one another. And so all media news outlets will say, U of L and other schools up their tuition or raise their tuition by blank, or they stayed flat. I don't know what the answer is going to be. Kevin doesn't know what the answer is going to be, but here's at least the ballpark, okay? So we've talked about this, but one more time, because I know that probably some of the questions in the chat is, I don't have an offer sheet. Again, look in your email account. We only mail the offer sheet one time. Um, after that, if you have an award change, we'll email you an updated offer sheet. But if you've lost the offer sheet, if, you, if you're struggling finding it, email our office and just say, can, can, a, can a new offer sheet be mailed to me? And James or Morgan or I will take care of that within 48 hours, okay? Um, Maybe with the ice storm, we don't get to it next, till next week, but we'll get to it. Um, one thing that we do ask you is that if you are emailing us a request like that, make sure that you are that you've logged into Ulink and you've updated your address. Um, we have maybe sent out six thousand of these. We've probably gotten back a hundred of them because people have moved. And if you've moved recently, um, if maybe mom and dad are divorced and you live with one, but you left your home address on your U of L application as the other, maybe it went there and the other person threw it away, did not knowing what it was, okay? But bottom line, we'll get you a new offer sheet, okay? So this is what the offer sheet looks like, okay? And Kevin was exactly right. It's, a, it's long, it's about four pages long, it's color. And if you don't have a color printer and you're printing it, it's okay, don't worry about that. We just put color in there to help break up some of the sections and make it look a little pretty, okay? Um, but in terms of this is what it's going to look like, we're going to break this down kind of section by section. The first page, honestly, it's just a welcome. It's just let, you know, letting you know that we're happy that you're thinking of coming to the University of Louisville, and we want to be very transparent about the cost and what the next four years are going to look like. We also list out some other options in terms of how to cover the remaining cost. The second page or the back page, that's what most people care about. Okay, this is the one that most people want to focus on. Sorry, folks, every once in a while, let's see, 30 minutes of talking, I got to take a drink every once in a while. So, so this is the one that most people want to talk about. And by all means, we have a lot of families 
print this out, come talk to James, Morgan, or myself, even the admissions counselor and say, I want to understand this line by line. Can you help me walk through it? And we'll do that as well. But this top sheet, just understand that the numbers we've listed there, again, those are the estimated numbers. Based on your FAFSA, based on some of the information that you put on your admissions application, that's how we generated this ballpark of, we think that your tuition is going to be this because we think you're a resident or a non-resident. You marked that you were going to be living on campus. So that's what it's listed as. If you're a non-resident and mark that you're not going to live on campus, maybe that number is wrong and we need to change that. But this gives you a ballpark sense of these are estimated numbers. They're going to be updated for 22, 23 in about April. The next section is these are your awards, okay? Um, and so we're going to break these down kind of individually. That first section, sorry, is the free money, okay? Anything that's free money, grants, scholarships, that's the, the, the free money that's in play. The second section, that's the loan money that you have an option to accept, decline, or reduce. This third section, we try to do some of the math for you, okay? So we try to kind of help you figure out X minus Y equals Z. And we're going to break this down further over the next couple of slides. Now, please note, remember I told you about 500 students have that work study award on your account? Please remember that yes, it's listed there so that you're aware that you have that option to participate in the work study uh, 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 program. However, when you look at the mathematics on the right hand side, we list out for you your, your charges minus your gift aid minus your loans, that's your upfront cost. And then we list the loan, the, the work study down below because every two weeks, if you work 10 to 15 hours, you're going to get a bi weekly paycheck. That money goes to your checking account, not to your bill, okay? You have every right and ability to reroute the money, but that money goes to you initially, okay? So again, just kind of reading through. And remember, this is for the year. We know that these numbers are big, but we do this intentionally because we want you to understand that, that this is the projection for your freshman year your sophomore year, your junior year, because you're going to get a new one of these all the time. But for the purpose of this, I know a lot of parents like call us in and be like, I can't afford 23,000 in, in August. You're going to divide that number in two, okay? But that's your billing amount. That next line, that's your gift money. That's the free money that's going to come into play. And then that's your loan money. And now in some cases, there may be so much gift money or so much loan money that if you accepted all of it, that you may actually get a refund, okay? You may not actually owe a balance up front, okay? Um, but again, remember, divide that amount in two, and that amount you're gonna be dealing with half of it in August and half of it in January. So this is an example of a student who is commuting, a, a Kentucky resident. So ballpark, we're talking about, that student is gonna owe about $14,000 in terms of their tuition, their housing, and their estimated cost for books and supplies. In terms of free money, they didn't get a, a scholarship from the admissions office. They didn't qualify for some grant money from the government. So they got about $2,000 worth of keys money. Um, so if they did nothing else and they chose not to take the loan, then they would have to come up with about $12,000 um, in terms of the, the overall cost. If they chose to take the loan money, now they're looking at about an overall cost of about $6,500, $6,600. But remember, divide by two, okay? So that's for the year. So we're gonna ballpark that to about 3250 for fall, 3250 for spring, okay? Now, how do I pay the bill? We're gonna have a whole nother uh, Facebook Live session in July on that one. And that one honestly is one of our most well attended sessions. Um, the bursar's office is there, I'm there. Uh, Kevin's there, we're, we're all there. And the reason being is, is we wanna make sure that in June, in May, you're gonna go through orientation. And that is an exciting time to kind of get really charged up. Uh, I'm ready to be a Cardinal. I'm gonna have a great semester. And then around June, set, or excuse me, July 7th, we send the bill to your, to your home. And then it's kind of like this realization of, we've been talking about numbers for six months, but then it becomes real, okay? And that's a lot of times when sorry, parents will start to say, sorry, sorry, Siri decided to join the conversation. Um, so at that point in time, Kevin's really laughing and be like, he's totally flubbing this now. So at that point in time, um, 
that's when it becomes real in the sense of the parents really start to understand like, wow, now we're talking about a four digit number, a five digit number in terms of we've got to be, be ready to write a check. But that's why the, burst, the head of the bursar's office is there and we'll have more of these conversations. But in terms of like, well, I just want to get a framework of how the bill works. The bursar's office is set up very similar to ours. You can go to their website. Um, we take cash. We don't want you to take cash, especially in COVID. We don't want you to bring cash to the campus. You can make, you can mail by, you may mail in a check. You can uh, do a check online. You can do a credit card payment. That is walk through the bursar's office. I really do not recommend that because you have to absorb the convenience fee charge uh, for that. Because the bill in some cases can be ten thousand dollars, we cannot absorb the convenience fee charge that the credit card companies charge. I know a lot of families have five twenty nine plans, or maybe grandma's going to pay the bill. All of that is covered on their website, but we're going to have a really big Facebook Live event in July that covers all of that. The payment plan is the one that everybody gets stressed about now, though. So here's a quick example of that student that owes a ballpark figure of about $6,000 a semester, okay? Um, remember, we're gonna deal with this half in August, half in January, okay? So that ballpark is maybe you owe about $6,300 and you've got your keys money and your loan money on there and that's gonna ballpark it to about $3,600 in terms of an award. So you owe $2,750 in terms of the difference, okay? Maybe mom and dad doesn't have $2,750. Maybe grandma can't pay the whole 2750 up front. At that point in time, you can set up a payment plan with a bursar's office in July to divide that amount rather than one check in July to space it out over four months. Um, now, there is a later payment plan that starts in August, but simply all you're doing at that point in time is taking the amount of 2750 and instead of dividing it by five, you're dividing it by four, okay? Um, so it is important to go ahead and get, get in on that uh, early in July once those, those plans open up, okay? Now, a little bit about evaluating the aid packages or evaluating offer sheets. We already talked about this. We acknowledge and we think that you should put offer sheets side by side and really give an honest uh, thought process. This is what I call the dinner table conversation. A lot of times families will write a check for a basketball camp, a, a, a marching band camp, some kind of high school event for 50, 100, maybe even $1,000. But as you saw earlier, we're talking about a $6,000 semester bill and upwards of $10,000 in some cases. So this has to be an open dialogue conversation with mom and dad, a family dinner table conversation. And students also realize that if mom and dad are not giving you the answers that you want to hear, it may be because they're also thinking about your, your younger siblings. They may have to realize that there's not just your college expenses, there's your younger sibling college expenses that are gonna be uh, you know, in this conversation. So we've talked a lot about tuition, room and board costs, meal plans, book, book expenses, but there's other incidental costs. They don't add up as much, but they do add up. So think about like travel. If you're a local student from Louisville, you know how much that you spend you know, traveling around the city. But if you're, let's say, from Bowling Green, from Cincinnati, from Indianapolis, from Nashville, that's about a three-hour drive. It's a doable weekend drive. But how often are you going to make that trip home? If you go home every weekend for mom to do your laundry, mom, do not do the kid's laundry. Um, that's going to add up over the course of a semester. That's a lot of gas money that you're going back and forth on, okay? If you're from out of, out of if you're further out of town, if you're from Chicago, if you're from California, Texas, and you're going to fly. Okay, well, we've got fall break, we've got Thanksgiving break, we've got Christmas break, we've got spring break. Well, that's four plane tickets. Okay, how often are you going to travel home? Okay, so yes, we, your, your parents want to see you as often as possible, but there's travel costs that, that's not going to be on your university bill. Also, we want you to have an honest conversation about your career objectives. Okay, think about how much you're going to take out in loans versus what your career objectives are going to be and what your starting salary is going to be once you graduate, five years after you graduate, 10 years after you graduate, okay? So think about that in terms of like the ballpark figure of your loan funds, average 27, but if you're gonna have to borrow more, what are your career objectives going to allow you to pay back, okay? Don't be one of those scary, scary media myth stories that we talked about earlier. So, I think we're down to our last four slides. So how else can you pay for school, Mike? We've talked about the offer sheet. We've talked about loans, but 
how else can I pay for school? So one great opportunity is the Metro College program, okay? Um, for those of us who live in the local Louisville area, you know what a great, uh, an awesome employer UPS is to our, how important they are to our local community. If you're not from Louisville, if you're from out of state, guess what? About five miles from where James is sitting right now is the largest UPS hub in the nation, okay? Um, so, and, and uh, right behind Kevin, that picture of that, uh, that clock tower, between 7 a.m. and right now, about every 20 minutes, there's a UPS plane flying over that clock tower. Um, it's a great way to um, pay for college. It's not for everybody. There's a lot of time management that's involved in that. I strongly encourage you to think about going to their website, watching their videos, understand that their videos are like commercials. They're promoting their product, okay? But it's a great way to work for UPS, work as a package handler. It's not heavy manual labor, okay? You can watch the videos and show, and you can see what the workers are doing, but it's a great way to potentially graduate debt-free or at the very least, think about doing it for your freshman or sophomore year. It is not a four-year commitment. You do it semester by semester. Um, some students think about doing it part-time um, you know, for their first you know, one or two semesters until they get their feet wet. So it's a great opportunity to think about how do I pay for school without going into debt? Um, other opportunities. So obviously right now, I just actually saw this. Um, there are over 11 million um, job openings. The, the Department of Labor just released that statistic this morning. Yes, I'm old and I listen to rate talk radio. Um, so, uh, but the point is, is that there's a lot of job openings right now. You shouldn't take the first job that you think about in terms of like location or um, various other factors. One of the factors you should think about is, do they have some type of tuition remission program? Do they offer me some kind of educational benefit? We've listed a couple on here. No, we did not do the research of calling these companies and asking them. We just went to their website and copied and pasted some things. So you have to do the legwork in terms of thinking about, okay, if I graduate in May, I'm going to get a summer job. Get a summer job at one of these kinds of places whereby you can potentially earn some money to go to school, okay? The other great thing about working at these kinds of companies is a lot of times when you work at a Walmart, a Target, a Home Depot, a McDonald's, they'll actually transfer you to the local Louisville office, okay? So if you're in Chicago and you're working at that Home Depot, they don't want to train a new person here. They would rather just transfer you and say, well, you can go work at, at this office in Louisville or this store in Louisville. I do want you to make sure that, again, be careful when reading these websites. Starbucks, we all love Starbucks. I think there's like four of them right around the Louisville, the, the, the Louisville campus by itself. But if you work for Starbucks, yes, they have a tuition remission program, but it's only for the online uh, Arizona State University program. So it doesn't apply to coming to the University of Louisville. So you've got to be careful when you think about your jobs. So what's next? And I get it. Kevin said this earlier. We're not going to talk about it now. I want to leave plenty of time for questions, but just so that you have it in the back of your mind. Make sure that you're checking that Ulink account and looking for those U of L email notifications about your to-do list items. Also, be careful about outside mailings from not U of L, not another school, but third-party organizations. Okay, people that are not affiliated with a university. Be aware of the $100 deposit that you have to complete before you sign up for orientation. Also, sign up for orientation. Also, make sure that you are completing all required steps for housing. Um, we want to make sure that you're getting the housing option that you want, as well as if you're not going to be living on campus, that you're completing the proper steps so that you don't end up with a housing charge, okay? So with that in mind, James and Morgan, there's their contact information. Take a quick picture of that. Mike, who do I call? Honestly, you can call any of us. We don't care who you end up calling. We just break this out so that there's some territory split of, you know, if you're from Alaska, you call Morgan. If you're from Illinois, you call James. If you don't know who to call, call the guy in the green shirt and I'll answer your question, but I'll loop you in so that you know who to call in the future, okay? Um, but we really don't care who you call. We just wanna make sure that your question gets answered. So I'm going to stop sharing and I'm gonna take a big drink of water while uh, James or Kevin or somebody starts feeding me questions. I gotcha. All right, we're gonna give Mike a little break. Thank you so much, Mike, for all that information. We definitely appreciate it. Hopefully everyone learned a little bit today. 
Um, and I'm going to go over a few more ground rules, um, just to kind of reiterate, because you joined us, I know we had a lot of people kind of join us a little bit later, um, and also go over some kind of questions, some simple ones that I know I can grab real quick so Mike can take some rest for a second. So first and foremost, um, we've gone through everything we're going to talk about tonight presentation-wise, so now is the time for you to ask us your questions, things that maybe you need Mike to repeat or elaborate on a little bit, questions that you had that um, you know, he was talking about and he didn't quite address or things that we didn't talk about at all. Now it's definitely the time to ask them. Just remember, we're keeping tonight a little bit more general. So any private information, anything related to your taxes or your, you know, personal identity or things like that, we're happy to help you out with. Let's do that one-on-one -on -one after the Facebook Live tonight. You know, feel free to email, phone call, come on into the office, whatever you need. Um, so go ahead, type those questions along. Um, we're also going to try as much as we can to keep these questions that we're asking tonight um related to financial aid offer sheets and financial aid questions if you have questions about other things like orientation um which is coming up here soon you can't sign up for orientation yet but you will be able to this month um ask your admissions counselor on um, louisville.edu backslash admission send us an email we'll be happy to help you in the contact info is all available there i did get one question and this was something that was um that was asked towards the very beginning we kind of talked about it at the very beginning and mike went over that tile on you link as the tasks tile um that is something i know a lot of freshmen will see because you might have an alert and says like oh you have this to complete and this to complete we talked about the financial aid tasks you're going to see some other tasks on there as well. One of them is going to say you have a hold for advising and you need to complete orientation, all that good stuff, right? Um, sign up for classes, stuff like that, okay? If you see that, do not freak out, okay? Every single student that is coming in this fall will have a hold on their account and they'll say you need to complete X, Y, and Z. You will complete all of that at orientation. So don't email us saying, I need to do this right now. How do I do that? I promise you, you'll get it taken care of. The stuff that you need to focus on is ones that say like verification, have forms that you can click on to fill that out. Um, so as you're going through, you see that task style, you see some alerts, don't worry, you'll be totally fine. Um, that's coming up and we'll take care of you at the or through the orientation process. Another thing to remember, then Mike repeated it a few times, we're going to be talking a lot about stuff like verification, stuff like paying your bills, all that stuff throughout the rest of the semester. So we are just on February 1st, it just turned to February. We are really early and we're doing this so that we can make sure you start out early as you're starting to think about where you wanna to go to college and all that good stuff. It is not bad if you don't have your financial aid offer sheet yet. Like Mike said, there's 600 people who are getting it within the coming days. Um, so many people do not have the financial aid offer sheets yet. Um, and that's totally fine. This will always be available on our Facebook, on our YouTube, but don't stress and don't stress about stuff like, oh my gosh, I've selected for verification. What do I need to do? Plenty of time before that needs to be taken care of. So don't stress too much. Um, where you could stress a little bit is if you get an email back saying, hey, your FAFSA was rejected or something like that. And we'll talk a little bit, I think we touched it on it a little bit, Mike, in the presentation, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a question in a second. Um, don't stress, we're here to help you out, figure out what you need to do in order to fix that, okay? But as we're going through, type in your questions in the chat. We're going to answer them as many as we can. Um, we have Morgan and James from Financial Aid Office. You saw them a second ago. They're typing in some answers. I'm typing in some answers as well. Um, so that's what we're here for. But um, Mike, I want to start out a little, hopefully a little bit more simple and we can go in general. We'll talk about rejection, rejected FAFSA a second ago, okay? If a student gets a rejection email or they're told, hey, your FAFSA was rejected, what should they do? Do they freak out? Do they run around and say, oh my gosh, what do I do? Um, what can they do to kind of fix that rejection um, status? So that's a great question, but I had to laugh because you started talking about phone calls from us. And one of the things that we all at the university, Kevin included, folks, if you see an 852 number pop up on your phone, it's not spam, it's not, it's not some insurance company, it's the University of Louisville, okay? Kevin's number starts out with 852. My number, James, more, everybody's number at U of L starts out with 852. So if you see an 852 number, do pick it up. Do realize that it's somebody from the university trying to reach out to you. And rejection is a great, uh, a great start to that. Um, we actually, um, uh, about every two weeks, James Morgan and I, we start this outreach process all over again, every two weeks of trying to figure out like, who didn't get an offer sheet and why? And every two weeks, about 20 students, 50 students, it's because they have a rejected FAFSA. Um, and nine times out of 10, it's because 
the student completed the FAFSA, but maybe they didn't realize that mom or dad needed to sign the FAFSA. So what the government is going to do is they're going to send you an email that says your FAFSA has been received, but it hasn't been processed yet. It's rejected. Um, it's an easy fix. Um, usually it's going to be you log, you helping mom and dad log in. Um, I always tell people, call the 1-800 number um, uh, and they can help you walk through it as well. Um, James just the other evening sat down with a family in his, in his office and had them log in on their laptop and walk them through that process. We can't do it for you, but we can walk you through it, okay? Um, but it's a fairly easy process now. There are other circumstances where beyond the, the, the parent signature, that honestly is probably 90% of them, but there's other circumstances where you maybe put your, uh, your adjusted gross income where your taxes belong and, your, and vice versa. Well, that's not possible. Your taxes can't be higher than your income, okay? But the government's going to let you type that in the answer box, but then, then, then they're going to tell you, we can't, we can't mathematically calculate that. But don't stress so much about the details. Just realize that if you get a rejection email from the government, from us, or a phone call from James or Morgan, that we're trying to help you fix that. Absolutely. And one of the nice things about FAFSA is that if you get a rejection email from us, it means every school you send it to also has a rejection email. But in the same way, the Pell Grant you get from U of L, you follow up from U of L, is going to be the same at every other school you're looking at. Same with your loans and stuff like that. So that's one of the nice things to kind of vary around. Um, another question here for you, um, Mike, is so we talked a little bit about local students um, and like commuting to campus, right? And for those of you who might be a local student, if you there is a two-year housing live-on requirement. You have to live on campus your first two years unless you're a local student. We mean local within like maybe 30 minutes of campus. So Lexington, Kentucky is not considered local, even though you're about an hour away, right? So um, for those students who start out and they haven't filled out uh, the exemption form yet, right? Maybe they get a financial aid offer sheet that has them living on campus and they fill it out in March, okay? Will they get a new updated financial aid offer sheet soon that tells them like, hey, uh, now your cost is gonna be this much, this is much lower, or will they just kind of do the math in their head? So part of that, that particular part of the data is actually pulled off the FAFSA. And when you mark on the FAFSA that you're living on campus or off campus, that's where we're pulling that information. We do not want you, please hear me on this. We do not want you to log back into your FAFSA and correct that answer. The reason for that is, is by doing that, you may actually create conflicting information or you may end up getting selected for the verification process and have more work to do, okay? So it is just better for you to realize that on your offer sheet, you can, you can go to the admissions website, you can, um, you can reach out to us, you can go back and watch the video. That original chart that I had up there that had the, I don't remember, 14,000 14, and change, then you can just scratch that number out and, and write that number in and do the math from there. Worst case scenario, call James, Morgan, or myself, and we'll help you walk through that number. But we don't want you to um, log back into your FAFSA and change an answer because you may actually cause more harm than good at that point. So, and we had a follow-up question come in from Reagan. Um, when is the exemption request due for housing? Um, if you qualify to live at home, um, you can fill that out on your gateway. So your application gateway, your new card gateway. Um, and you really have, there's really no set deadline really until May 1st when the whole decision deadline is due. Um, and I do know the application priority deadline for housing, if you're planning on living on campus, is April 1st. So um, you really want to kind of decide before April 1st as much as you can if you want to live on campus or at home. Um, okay, we got a question from I'm trying to uh, from Andrea, um, and she wanted to know uh, when are the state cap grant official notifications sent out. So, sorry, all good. You've been talking a lot tonight. So the state cap grant is based on your FAFSA. So if you filed your FAFSA and you marked on your FAFSA that you're a Kentucky resident, about every two weeks. The state sends us that file and we update your, your, your offer sheet with that information. Now, we do have to be aware that with the Pell Grant, the Pell Grant comes from an unlimited source, okay? It doesn't matter if you filed your FAFSA in October or if you filed it you know, this week or in, in, in August. If you qualify, you qualify, you get it. But with the state, the state runs out of money at some point in time. So it is very critical that if you're going to file the FAFSA that you do it sooner rather than later, 
There's right now there's still plenty of cap grant money, but we don't want you to wait to file that FAFSA until June or July um, or December. In some cases, there are students who wait until the semester is almost over. Don't be that procrastinating student. If you're joining us tonight, I know that you're not a procrastinating student. But um, if you got an offer sheet that didn't have the cap grant on there, um, but you know that you're a Kentucky resident and you know that you got the Pell Grant, there's got to be some logical reason. It might be something as simple as a timing issue, but there's got to be some logical reason why that's not on there. Again, exactly what Kevin said, if you got a Pell Grant at UK and you got a cap grant at UK, guess what? You're going to get the same award there. It might be a timing issue of when we downloaded things, but we're going to get it. But if you're concerned about it, give one of us a call and we're going to research that and figure out how do we get you a new updated offer sheet with the proper cap grant reflection. The other thing to note about the offer sheet, we keep talking about the offer sheet over and over. Um, and Kevin brought up a good point about like, when, do, when does the numbers in terms of like housing and change, realize when you get your bill in June and July, that's going to be the real number, okay? That's going to be the real number in terms of here's your tuition, here's your fees, here's housing, here's your meal plan, here's financial aid. So there, you will get an official document and do that delegated access so that everybody gets it so that that's going to be your real numbers. What we're hoping with the offer sheet is to have a dialogue conversation about ballpark figures so that when you get that in June or July, in terms of the real bill, that it, there's not this shock. Absolutely. So keep typing your questions in there. We still have about, um, about 15 minutes ish to answer some questions, go over whatever y'all want to know about. Um, Mike, one question we get a lot, especially since the beginning of the pandemic over the past year or so we've gotten it a lot is, you know, students, parents are filling out the FAFSA and maybe, you know, the FAFSA uses prior, prior year taxes. Um, maybe something happened in that year. Maybe they, a parent lost a job or there's some sort of traumatic event that caused a loss of income and it's not reflected on the FAFSA um, that they're filling out, on the taxes that were used for this FAFSA. What do students going through that, what do parents going through that, what do they do? What are their options from U of L um, to go over maybe uh, finding out, maybe using current taxes or finding out if they are eligible for anything more? Excellent question. Um, so we saw a huge impact on this throughout March of 2020, when the pandemic first started, as well as the, 20, the, the start of the 21 academic year. Um, this process is called professional judgment. So most everybody knows that when you file the FAFSA, you're using the prior year data information. In other words, um, if you are a current student, not an incoming freshman, but a current fall, fall student, your FAFSA reflected your parents' 2019 tax information. The pandemic hit in 2020. Most parents, you know, while, while impacted, you know, maybe six to eight weeks in terms of furlough or unemployment, were able to maintain some sense of normalcy. But in 2021, that's when a lot of, you know, a lot of families maybe went through an experience of they were let go from their position because their job finally closed down or Maybe there was an unfortunate divorce of the pandemic just pushed things too far between a married couple. So you as an incoming freshman, your FAFSA turned in 2020 tax information. So it was probably pretty indicative of the financial circumstances of your parents being furloughed. And hopefully that was just a short period and they got back on track in 2021. But let's say it didn't. Maybe things went, went south. Uh, in 2021, or it's going to go south in 2022. Maybe, maybe that divorce finally did happen. Um, you can reach out to our office, as well as the other colleges and universities you're looking for. And this, the magic word is, I want to talk to a counselor about a professional judgment. Okay, that is the magic word that you're going to use or magic two words that you're going to use to help us understand. Let's pull up your FAFSA. Let's talk about that story. Let you know, tell us about what's going on in terms of my parents got divorced, okay? We need to divide out the income. Or my dad is retiring in 2020, uh, uh, 2022, but the taxes reflected in 2020 that he made a lot of money. So yes, we can definitely look at those circumstances. I wanna be very clear with the audience that not every professional judgment yields a positive outcome, okay? Very honestly, a lot of times we're simply having a, comp that's the nice part about my job, about James and, and, and Morgan's job, 
is we're dealing with mathematics. Kevin has to deal with emotions. So, so you might tell us, my dad lost $5,000 worth of income. That's horrible. That is a, a terrible sting to your, day, your, your family's daily and monthly checkbook. We're going to take that money and we're gonna plug it into a mathematical calculator, or calculator as designed by the Department of Education. And it's gonna spit out to us, yes, you can give the student more grant funds. No, the loans is all they're gonna get. And that's, that's what we have to do. Um, it's not that we're, you know, we're not being emotional about the process. We're being objective so that we're treating all students, whether it's from Louisville, Kentucky, Owensboro, Pikeville, Florida, Alaska, we're treating everybody fairly and equally as far as a mathematical calculation, okay? But yes, by all means, call our office and that magic word is, I'd like to talk to a counselor about a professional judgment. Awesome, thank you so much. We got another follow-up question from Andrea. It's actually a pretty good one. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of summarize it here. So when will or do students ever get updated financial aid offer sheets? And if they do, what sorts of things would cause them to get an updated offer sheet? Is it automatic or is it just random? Great, um, so in terms of your offer sheet, just to reinforce, you get one mailed offer sheet, okay? After that, anytime there's a single dollar change to your account, we send you an email on Friday that says, hey, here's your new offer sheet. And it's gonna look exactly like the one we mailed you. You're just gonna print it out instead. That's all that's gonna happen. Um, we have some students that honestly, by July, have seven different offer sheets, okay? So that's not uncommon. And why might you get a new offer sheet? Well, in about 30 days, Every student that got a Pell Grant is going to get a new offer sheet because we're going to update it to the 22-23 Pell amounts. If Kevin is your counselor and you're working with him for a scholarship and you got one scholarship, but you got a new test score or something happened where a second review was done on your scholarship and he decides, you know what, we're going to give the student another $500, another $1,000. Guess what? That's going to generate another offer sheet. If you get an outside scholarship, you remember we talked about those churches or those high schools, if you report that you got a outside scholarship from your church, that's going to generate another offer sheet. So anytime there's a single dollar change to your account, that Friday will send you a new updated offer sheet. Um, so we want to make sure that you're getting, you're getting the most uh, up-to-date information. If you're ever concerned that you missed something, again, Log into Outlook, which is your, 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 your UofL email account, is we use the Microsoft Outlook product. And in the search engine, type in the word offer. And like I said, every once in a while, you might have seven offer sheets in there. Click on the one that has the most recent date, print that one, and that's the mathematics that, you, that you're going to be working with. I forgot to mention this earlier. Parents, and, uh, parents, when you call our office, we talked about this with delegated access. Please understand we have, we can only talk to the student. Like we can't reveal certain information to the parent. We understand you're writing out the bill, but if you've got that offer sheet in front of you, then you can say, I know that my son, Johnny has a trustees award for $3,000. His keys amount is 2132. Then you've revealed the information. We can then talk to you about it, but you can't ask us, can you tell me how much financial aid Johnny got? No, we can't. And another really good point that um, Mike kind of mentioned, I know Morgan put it in there in the, um, the comment section, the feature of Facebook. We use U of L emails. We always use U of L emails. We will never send, <coughs> excuse me, admissions might send some emails to your personal email that you used when you applied, but things coming from financial aid are always gonna go to your U of L email. We make it really like clear how you go in, how you activate it for the first time, how you sign back in, stuff like that. But if you from your Gmail account want to talk with Mike about your FAFSA and stuff like that, Mike can't do it. He can only talk to you through your U of L email because it's the only way that we know this is actually you, who you are, talking about private information. So always stay up to date with your U of L email, chat through there, and all of that good stuff. 
Um, we got some other questions coming in. Um, so there was a question um, from Jamie that my daughter has received notification for merit scholarships from other universities. Is this something U of L will do also? And yes, that is true. We do do that as well. So um, if you qualify for a merit-based scholarship, what we call automatic scholarships at U of L, we send those out on a rolling daily basis. So you'll know we'll get an email and also something in the mail first, usually, um, letting you know if you qualify for a scholarship from U of L's merit-based. All of our merit-based scholarships are based on test score and GPA, and a full list can be found on our website, just louisville.edu backslash admissions. We do accept new test scores up until May 1st. It's one of the good things that Mike was talking about a minute ago. You can qualify for a merit-based scholarship from us up until May of your senior year. Now, we do have some test optional scholarships, and it looks like there was a question um, in there. Um, we do have some test optional awards, okay? I want to stress these are few and far between. There's not as much money available for test optional scholarships. They are very competitive. So you will be notified if you qualify for an award. We're not telling you, hey, you, you didn't qualify. We looked over. You weren't going to get one, right? And we're not going to tell you that. We're only going to tell you if you qualify for a test optional award. Those are done on a rotating basis. Um, we kind of do them cyclically. So um, every few, like every month or two, we kind of do some more reviews. And again, you'll be notified there. And that will also, again, as Mike said, change your financial aid offer sheet um, once you find out. So hopefully that answers those two questions in there. Um, there was a question that I had a second ago. Oh, here it was. Um, so Mike, this is something we kind of get a lot. Students think, hey, uh, my parents make a lot of money. I'm not going to qualify for anything from FAFSA or, you know, I'm Elon Musk is Musk's daughter. Um, I'm not going to submit a FAFSA. Who do we recommend submit a FAFSA? Is there any time where I make too much money, my parents make too much money, and U of L looks at that and says, actually, we're going to give you nothing. We're going to take money away or something like that. Does it ever affect a student from making nothing or making like too much not to qualify for anything from FAFSA? So my answer to that for the past 20 years has been file a FAFSA. And here's why. Um, we, as well as most four-year public institutions are, are what is called a need blind school. And the, what I mean by that is that Kevin does not look at the FAFSA information to determine your scholarship information. Doesn't happen. He doesn't look at Elon Musk's daughter and say, they're a millionaire. I don't have to give them any scholarship money because they can pay for it all. That does not happen at UofL. Let me be very clear about that up front. But with that in mind, we do encourage all families to file a FAFSA because you might think that you're upper middle income, but we may have some, some institutional grant money whereby the government, the federal government, the state government says, you have to be middle to low income to qualify for the Pell Grant or for the CAP Grant, fine. But we may also have some institutional money where, that, where we say, because you didn't get money from the federal government or the state government, we are going to try to supplement and give a small institutional grant to ease the financial burden that, you, that you're facing. But if you don't have a fast fund file, at that point in time, we assume that you're Elon Musk's daughter and you're writing a blank check um, and you don't care about that. The other reason that you want to have the fast on file is what if, what if mom and dad lose their job in August and you have to, how, how do I pay for this? You know, um, what if God, you know, God forbid a parent passes away um, and there's not an action plan of how do I pay the bill? At least at that point in time, we have the fast on file that we can determine like, can we do a PJ? No, we can't do a PJ, but you have a loan option. With that in place, we can have the loan processed in less than seven business days. But if you don't have the FAFSA on file, at that point in time, it may take 15 to 20 business days, okay? Um, so yes, I understand, and, and um, whoever asked the question, I get it. There's a lot of families. It's about, two, it's about a two-third, um, one-third split. About two-thirds of the freshman population file a FAFSA. About one-third, we're just gonna pay for it out of pocket. And that's fine. And there's actually, you know, of those two thirds, I don't know off the top of my head, there's a certain percentage that never take the loans. That's great. But at least you filed the FAFSA, like I said, just in case. Also just realize that in some cases, 
some of those sophomore uh, scholarships require a FAFSA on file. They want to know what is your need-based requirement at that point. Not the admissions-based one, but the ones further down the line. Also, if you're going to be a Metro College student, have that opportunity to work for UPS, they require the FAFSA on file, not because they, they determine whether or not they're going to hire you or not, but simply because they want to make sure that you're maximizing your grant money from the government first before they pay anything, okay? But excellent questions. Absolutely, and I, I always go, Mike was talking earlier, we try to, UofL really tries to make it as affordable as possible, as we possibly can to come. And I, I, I think probably my favorite example that I use at every campus, if you come to visit us on campus and you see me, I talk about it um, in the past year, I've talked about it every single day. This past year, we used our CARES Act funding to give every single student, regardless of need, between $400 and $1,500 off of tuition. Didn't have to have FAFSA on file, but the money that we got from the federal government we tried to use that to make every single student have their college be more affordable. So we're trying to help you out. We might've been one of the only schools in, the, in at least uh, Kentucky or at least the country maybe as well that did that. And it just shows we're really trying to go the extra step um, and make it affordable, whether you are related to a billionaire or not, we really are trying. So keep asking those last minute questions if you all have them. Um, and if you um, want to type those in the comment section, we still have a, another minute or two. We can maybe have more time for one or two more questions. Um, and again, all this will be available um, on Facebook and on YouTube over the next few days. Mike, if, as we wait for any like final questions or comments, is there any last minute piece of advice you have for students who are going through this process, um, you know, going through just the college selection process in general and comparing things or just things you want them to know about UofL's financial aid office that you maybe want them to take advantage of as we get to, you know, inching closer to that May 1st decision deadline. Absolutely. I want to first off, thank everybody for joining us tonight. Um, you know, we, we kind of tease sometimes the families that, that come to us in, in August or even frankly in October, those are the families that kind of procrastinate that decision at the last moment. If you're joining us tonight, you're not a procrastinator. And what we wanna make sure that you take away from this moment is that have that honest dinner table conversation, sit down with that offer sheet. If you know that UofL is your number one choice, great, fantastic, we want you here. Sit down as a family, look over that offer sheet and have parents have that honest conversation with your son and daughter to say, Johnny, Susie, this is a 14, this is a 23, this is a $39,000 commitment. Yes, as Kevin said, hopefully between the FAFSA and your merit-based scholarship and everything else, we have chipped away some of those dollars and made it affordable. But have that important dinner table conversation to say, okay, the final number is this. This is how we're going to make it work. We're going to make a payment. We're going to do a payment plan. We're gonna to have to take out loans. We're going to have to do a combination of three or four different things, but have an honest conversation about that offer sheet, about what those numbers are going to look like. And I know this is this is probably the hardest part for me and Kevin to, to, to express. We want you here. At the same time, we also understand that after you call us and you have this, the numbers are, are we're struggling with this. We understand that in some cases, if that number is too big, that maybe you have to look at a school that's closer to home so that you're not having to pay for housing costs. Maybe you have to look at a community college option for two years and then transfer to UofL. Um, maybe if you're a non-resident, maybe that number's too big. Again, academically, if you, if you got the invite to, to, to join us tonight, you've been admitted here. That means that you can reach the four-year goal of earning that degree 100%. Kevin, I, James, Morgan, we want you to get that academic degree. We also don't want you to be under a mountain of debt or to get to August or October and not be able to pay the bill. So I encourage you, have that dinner table conversation. Call us and make us part of that dinner table conversation. Pro or con, we will have a transparent conversation with you. So that's what I, would, I want you to take away from tonight. Absolutely. All right, y'all. Well, we didn't get any like last minute questions. So I'm going to go ahead and say that we're going to wrap this up. So I'm going to end with a few final reminders. First of all, as we said a few times, this will always be available on our Facebook page. 
if you months from now forget something that Mike said or want to review what he was talking about with that colorful paper, or if you have friends from school or family members who, you know, cousins who are coming to UofL and they didn't get to see this, it'll always be available for them to see. As Mike mentioned, um, both the Office of Financial Aid and the Office of Admissions are located in the Houchins building, generally open nine to five every day, except I think Mike has said Thursdays, it's 10 to five. Um, so come on in or email us, give us a phone call, whatever you need. You can schedule with admissions, a one-on-one -on -one appointment. We'll be happy to help you out. Visit louisville.edu backslash admissions to find your counselor or louisville.edu backslash financial aid for the financial aid contact info. We'll be happy to help. Um, we definitely appreciate y'all coming. Your next thing's coming up. We're going to have more things like this. This will not be the last time you see Mike in his beautiful green polo, the money polo. Um, we'll definitely have more things talking about other things um, related to financial aid and related to things like orientation, getting ready for starting classes um, in the fall and all that good stuff. But we hope that everyone, uh, it's, it was 60 degrees here today. We hope if it's warm where you are, you can enjoy some last minute nice weather. In Kentucky, we're about to get an ice storm on Thursday. So stay safe and warm uh, inside in the coming days. Um, we appreciate you. I'm going to end with a nice little go card, put my L's up, and we will see everyone soon. Goodbye, everybody. Take care. Thank you for joining us.